Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Today I want to start a new series that I think is interesting because I think the online fitness world doesn't actually care or talk about fitness for the most part and we really shouldn't be calling it the fitness world. It's almost like a lot of the YouTube channels and forums out there should be called the online bodybuilding world, the online aesthetics world, and they need to remove the term fitness from it because there's very little focus or understanding of fitness actually going on. And most fitness models and bodybuilders are not fit by any <laughs> real definition of the terms in exercise science. And someone I want to discuss up front, I want to get this series started by using someone who so most of us would agree probably could improve his fitness, but in terms of his overall fitness, he is probably still has a higher degree of fitness than the majority of bodybuilders and fitness models out there, particularly when they're near photo shoot time or contest time. And that's going to be the Major League Baseball player, Prince Fielder. Now, I've got the photos of him here, here that went on the cover of ESPN because he's clearly carrying extra body fat there. He's six foot tall, 275 pounds. However, he is also a five-time all-star, currently has a $24 million a year contract. Now, again, I want to start with baseball because baseball has a lower conditioning component than other sports. And we'll go into some other athletes of what real athletes actually look like, world-class athletes who are arguably the fittest human beings walking the face of the earth. But by many bodybuilding and online fitness standards, people would ask, oh, they're not very fit, they're out of shape. Now, in his case, he would probably be a lot more fit if he dropped 20 pounds of body fat. His conditioning would probably improve. But here's the thing I would ask people. We already know he's probably stronger and faster than a lot of the people out there in the fitness world and even fitness professionals. But the thing that you would probably want to ask also, okay, even from a conditioning component, I want to use the real conditioning word because the bodybuilding world is such a little tiny fringe culture and they try to take words from exercise science and change the meaning of them that to the rest of the sports world, which outnumbers them a thousand to one, I have a completely different meaning. And conditioning is one of those. Conditioning is how well you handle cardiovascular things, endurance events, things like that. How fast you can run a 5K is your conditioning, not your body fat level. So the thing that I would ask you is how many of the fitness models out there, let's say people that we know, could Rob Riches when he's at contest time or photo shoot time, or could Matt Ogus two weeks out from a contest compete with Prince Fielder in a 5K run? Could they beat him in a 100-yard sprint? Probably neither one. Is their blood work and health markers going to be as good as his? Possibly not. So the truth is you actually have a world-class athlete who by most standards on the fitness community, people would ask, oh, does he even lift or say this guy's out of shape? He's a fat fuck. But in reality, for all fitness and sporting purposes, he can outperform most likely the vast majority of the people that are worshipped in the fitness world. And he gets $24 million a year based on his athletic performance. So just looking at that should probably give us pause and make a step back and re-ask the question, what exactly is fitness? All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go. Oh, Mount Bicepius.